Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. The Patagonia papers are out and there's going to be hell to pay. This one we're not taking lying down. Mm -hmm. The Panama papers we took lying down, uh, slouching some of us, lying down many of us. Uh, leaning against a wall, maybe, but mm. we're not taking these lying down. Something must be done, and I'm. We're gonna do it. Mm -hmm. The Pandora Papers, by the way, Pandora. The Periwinkle <laughs> Papers are here, and they are making everybody. Because most people, when mm -hmm. we're we're home in our houses, we go. These billionaires are they're doing things on the up and up. That's right. That's what I think. I think when someone makes a billion dollars, for the most part, they're honest about everything. Mm -hmm. And now, these papers have shown us that many of these people, if you can believe it, are fibbing. Mm -hmm. They're concealing a wide array of assets through shell companies. They have multiple properties, mm. they have streams of capital that are not being taxed, and it's going to end tonight. Many of you are sitting at home going, what are the Panorama Papers? <laughs> what are they? <laughs> Why do I care? Does it matter to me? It does. Because now, now you have the evidence. King Abdullah, <laughs> just to give you an idea, King Abdullah. That's right. This guy's full of it. Listen to what King Abdullah is do doing. King Abdullah, I do not want to get all the celebrity news. Thank you. I just want to read about King Abdullah. Go up again. <laughs> okay, okay. These are King Abdullah's secret Malibu properties. Okay. Please go up. Pandora Papers <laughs> reveal royal taste in oceanfront properties from modern <laughs> palace to beach chic. What's great about this, this is a real estate website, the real deal. Mm. They're, they're reporting, you know, that a lot of people are cheating at the game, right? Mm -hmm. This is this is part of what the Pandora Papers are revealing. Mm -hmm. That people are taking money uh, and, and not using it to better the lives of their people or they're not paying into the tax system and they are, they are using these uh, illicit, not always illicit, but some of them are illicit, mm -hmm. streams of capital and they're using them to purchase real estate in cities like London, New York, um, California, and God help us, Austin, probably soon. So now the three Cliffside Drive homes perched side by side are combined 22,000 square feet and offer commanding views of the Pacific Ocean. Bought for $70 million over a three-year period, their ownership remained a mystery to neighbors in the exclusive Point Doom section of Malibu. I bet the neighbors went, who lives here? The largest one, a 12,000 square foot mansion, was registered to an address in Switzerland. Another... A four-bedroom villa was purchased by a company in the British Virgin Islands. And the third, a 7,600-square-foot grand European-style estate, was acquired from a Delaware-based LLC. The high-end properties are among more than a dozen that King Abdullah II, Bill, Bin Al Hussein of Jordan, who I live with, mm -hmm. uh, purchased through shell companies in the U.S. and abroad, revealed in this week's massive leak of financial documents known as the Pandora Papers. Um, the Malibu homes were purchased between August 2014 and September 2017. King Abdullah has also been going ahead with a plan to demolish one of his existing homes and build a much larger one. Every time you see, I'm not blaming all Arab billionaires here, but let me just say, uh, when they do build things, they're not really concerned with, um, you know... How shall we say the style of the neighborhood? Can we say that? Can we say that a lot of the Arab billionaires like to get big and bold with the home design? They don't really value continuity. 
again, it's just, that's an aesthetic critique for me. It's an aesthetic critique. Um, in some ways, the king's desire to remain anonymous is unremarkable. The rich, famous, and powerful have long plunged millions into choice homes while utilizing layers of shell companies to hide their dealings. It comes as no surprise, says Compass luxury broker Ron Wynn. The desire to hold the true identity can be so great that an agent working on a sale may not know the actual buyer. Many of them don't. Uh, for example, when I bought my house in Texas, I had convinced uh, my realtor that I was someone else mm. because I did not want to for her to know that it was actually me. Mm. So I had convinced my realtor that I was Megan McCain. I had gone in the Megan McCain wig, <laughs> the whole thing, and it was you know pretty seamless. I was not called out. So now here's the deal. Congress, and aren't they powerful, These the Congress? Mm -hmm. I have a lot of faith in the Congress. I do. Oh, yeah. They're, they just get it done, don't they? Congress, which has, what, a 15% approval rating in our own country, is now going to, they're cracking down on these hidden purchases. It's Congress versus King Abdullah. Hmm. <laughs> Who do you have? I, I got to be honest. Everything's about gambling now. Who yeah. does Dave Portnoy have? What's the sports book say? Congress, on one hand, uh, full of a bunch of slobs from Minnesota, mm. and uh, King Abdullah bin Aziz Hussein <laughs> Al Money. <laughs> Who's going to win that war? Well, let's see. Let's see if King Abdullah, and by the way, all of our financial establishment, mm. real estate establishment, mm. um, and a lot of Congress, verse. You know, people like Katie Porter, who seem like lovely people, mm -hmm. who go there and she's got, you know, mayonnaise on her thing. She's like, I made lunch for my kids today. And, you know, hey, Mr. Diamond, Jamie Diamond, would it surprise you to know that everybody that works at your bank eats food they find on the floor? <laughs> and he goes, well, Miss Porter, um, that would surprise me. And would it surprise you to know that the food they found on the floor is not even warm? It would. It would. I would think they'd pick it up right after it fell. Well, that is not what they're doing, sir. They're waiting many, many hours to eat the food. It's cold. So we have Katie Porter on one hand, and, and I like her because she seems like someone who throws breast milk, uh, like water balloons of breast milk, at a CEO, and I think we need more of that. <laughs> She's just fun. She's a mom. She drives a minivan, yep. and she just shits on these billionaires. Mm -hmm. I would like to see Katie Porter versus Abdullah bin Aziz Hussein Muhammad. Whatever his name is. I don't know. I'm not being racist. I can't remember his name. <laughs> Katie Porter on one side and then the King of Jordan on the other. It'd be fun. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Muhammad. You like Malibu, don't you? Yeah, I don't have too much time to go to the beach because I have three kids that are always nagging me to make their lunches. Okay? Okay? So I heard you have three You have three properties in Malibu? Yes. <laughs> See, the thing is, King Abdul is probably very charming. You know, yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. It is very nice. Mm. Well... I heard they were purchased uh, by shell companies. Now, would it surprise you to know, King Abdullah, that many people are using shell companies? This is not a bad Katie Porter, by the way. Many people are using <laughs> shell companies as a way to conceal the amount of money flowing into real estate that, uh, that are illicit streams of capital. Would that surprise you? Yes, very surprising. <laughs> But for years, the Malibu properties had beguiled the king's neighbors and local government officials. I'm the local Malibu government. Who is that? Some stoner? Who's that? The, pe the local government in Malibu is like all poor people that have lived there forever. Uh, yeah, yeah. And they just couldn't afford, they couldn't afford to buy anything there now. And they're just like, whoa, it's fucking the beach, man. King, oh, some king is fucking here, dude. Whoa. <laughs> you got to realize that the people that have money in California are very stupid. And because in New York, you make money, you know, you go to good schools, you, you're raised in a family that cares. Mm -hmm. uh, in California, you make money on OnlyFans or being like a music manager or whatever. That's Those are the industries in, in California. Whereas New York, it's like finance, um, you know, uh, insurance, real estate, tech, conventional banking. And in Los Angeles, you have like uh, OnlyFans, uh, music manager, uh, T t f tat face tattooed ragamuffin. <laughs> you just see like a kid with face tattoos and he's a trillionaire and you don't know how. And his name is like Gucci Provolone or something. Mm -hmm. So 
what is the point of I'm I'm struggling. I read about the Pandora Papers, mm. and I've struggled to find a point in all this. Because what are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to head down to Malibu and give the king the what for? Is that the point here? I'm I'm struggling to find the point of what's going on. Biden administration is cracking down on for-profit schools that made false promises about students' futures and drove them into debt. Sorry, I clicked this on This has nothing article. to do with anything. I clicked on the wrong article, and but by the here way, we go. Biden's also cracking down on this this week, though. Biden is, Biden is cracking down. This is the theme of the re- week, <laughs> cracking down. We're cracking down. Yeah. The president says the IRS needs two bits of information, all the money that goes mm. into your bank account and all the money that comes mm. out. I don't love that. What's this guy doing? He's cracking down. He's cracking down on, on the good American people about their tax cheating. There's no snooping Don't around. Don't most people in this country, like, not have a ton of money? Do we really need to analyze the tens of dollars going in and out of people's bank accounts? And on top of this, they're asking for everybody's stimulus is back if they, if they prove they couldn't find employment and stuff. So they're asking people to give back thousands and thousands That'll and thousands work. of dollars. That's a good idea. That'll work. That's like if you ever lent someone money. And then you're like, hey, so if you, you know, if you ever, if you ever want to put some of that together, yeah, yeah. And that's going to work. Yeah. So Biden, this corpse, mm. is out there. They're trying to just, because they need money now. We're yeah. about to default. Oh, the yeah. country's about to default mm. for the first time. Mm. And they need money, so they're cracking down on your Venmo transactions. <laughs> who did you have that pizza with and who did you pay? So the government's on the on track to default for the first time ever, which mm. is bad because we're a we're a good you know we have a good credit rating and it'll fuck us up. And Janet Yellen, who's a terrifying looking human being, who what is she? She's the chairman of the Federal Reserve. That's correct. Man, they just trot her out when there's bad news to be had, don't they? Well, she's the Treasury Secretary. She's like that's... she's like grandma, but grandma's always got bad news. <laughs> she's always coming out with a cancer diagnosis. You know? Yeah. That's grandma. Grandma comes out. She's like. She just looks like the type of person who walks in the middle of dinner and goes, stage four. At best case, an aggressive stage three. Oh, sorry, Grandma. I'll be fine. You know? I'll be fine. They may have to chop my old tits off. I may have to shave my head. I look like that girl from that show you watch. What's that show? Stranger Things? Yeah, I look like her. But that's okay. Don't worry about me. I'll just be here defaulting on the national debt <laughs> with my cancer-ridden body. I don't know if she's had cancer. I'm just saying she looks like an old grandma mm. that comes in and drops a bomb. Yeah, yeah. And she has. Janet Yellen on Tuesday said she believes the economy would fall into a recession if Congress fails to address the federal government's borrowing limit before an unprecedented default on the U.S. debt. So October 18th is the deadline. It would be catastrophic to not pay government's bills for us to be in a position where we lack the resources to pay the government's bills. Yellen said during an interview on CNBC's Squawk Box. I like that guy. You know the fat guy from Squawk Box? Mm-mm, I don't know. Get the fat guy up from Squawk Box. Okay, okay. I like him. What happened to him? Squawk Box. Host. Squawk Box fat guy. Image. Okay, I'll just type in Squawk Box fat guy. Yeah, what happened to him? I don't like the new guy. Squawk, squawk Box fat guy. Yeah, where's he? Is that him on the left? Yes, what happened to him? (laughs) Let me see. It's this new guy I don't like. Where is the fat guy from Squawk Box? I got to see. Co-hosted by Joe Kernan, Becky Quick, Andrew Ross Sorkin. I don't want Andrew Ross Sorkin. Get him out of here. It must be Joe Kernan. That's right. Yeah, yeah, Joe Kernan. No, that's not him. Well, he looks good there. The hell photo is that? That's like me using a photo of Tana Mojo. Yeah. Anyway, so Janet Yellen, <laughs> Grim Grandma, let's call her. Grandma Grim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Grandma Grim goes on Squawk Box with the reality, which is that we don't have any money left. Mm. Joe Biden's trying to take your money out of Venmo. And uh, so what, what's the plan here? They were going to come up with some coin. They're really demonizing crypto. we got to get Peter Schiff. Have we made any progress getting Peter Schiff on the show? I am in communication with um, um, the, the assistant of Peter Schiff. But Great. But we don't really have the capability. Because this is right financial now. news now. That's and Peter right. Schiff, I've been watching him for the last year, and every day he talks about the end. Mm. I think he'd be a really good addition. The trillion-dollar coin scheme. So uh, this is interesting. Mm. This is a uh, a way to avoid potentially defaulting. Mm. 
okay? It says, on Tuesday, the Treasury Secretary, Yellen, said uh, she does not intend to mint a platinum coin mm. worth $1 trillion to pay for the U.S. government's expenses. If you're not familiar with the platinum coin idea or the hashtag mint the coin, <laughs> boy, we're at the end, aren't we? Um, the small army of coinistas who've become a vocal point of economics and financial circles since early 2010, you might be saying, what are you talking about? The short answer is that later this month, the U.S. will exceed the legal limit on how much outstanding debt the federal government can hold, the debt ceiling. The Senate Republicans have agreed to an allow an extension through December, and that just sets up another confrontation in a few months. So to avert a global economic catastrophe, um, some observers have broached some interesting but, you know, absurd ideas. One of them is mint the coin. And um, the Treasury Secretary could simply fund the government by minting platinum coins. Interesting. In 2013, even U.S. former Mint director Philip Deal agreed it would work. Over the years, influential voices like Joe Wiesenthal and Paul Krugman have also promoted the idea. But they did not simply stumble upon this. It was brought to their attention by Beowulf, a blog commenter and reply guy, better known as Atlanta area attorney Carlos Mucha. Mucha conceived of the idea in a short comment on financier Warren Mos Mosler's blog, posted May 24, 2010. This is the comment. Curiously enough, Congress has enough delegates um, delegated to Treasury. All the signerage power authority it needs to mill one trillion coin. Even numismatic coins are legal tender at their face value must be accepted by the Federal Reserve. The catch is it's got to be made of platinum. Ditto the balls of any president who tried this. Got to have platinum balls. Mm -hmm. So for one ounce coin, uh, TSY would net only 999.998 uh, billion. So Yellen is not prepared to mint the coin. She doesn't want to mint the coin. She doesn't want to mint the coin. So instead, uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris will be going through your <laughs> Zelle and Venmo transactions to get the money back that they gave you so you stop burning things down. <laughs> now that you've proven that you can go a few months without burning things down, mm -hmm. they feel comfortable asking for the money back. Imagine in the middle of the burning of the things down, mm -hmm. they're like, how about that money? No one said that, but now mm -hmm. that everybody hasn't, you know gotten frisky, they're saying, let's get some of that money back. Mm -hmm. This fall, as you get back into the swing of things, Bespoke Post is here with a new season lineup of must-have, Box of Awesome Collections. Bespoke Post partners with small businesses and emerging brands to bring you good stuff every month. Really cool, unique stuff. You get a new box every single month with really cool that you can kind of custom design, but you're still surprised. They have you covered. From autumn craft beers to cozy threads, camping gear essentials, Box of Awesome has collections for every part of your life. It is a really great gift for someone, too. Mm -hmm. Not only for you, but it's a great gift for somebody who went away to school or something. Get started. Take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right Box of Awesome for you. They release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. It's free to sign up, and you can skip a month or two or cancel any time. Each box costs only 45 bucks, but has $70 worth of gear inside. Plus, with each Box of Awesome, you're supporting small business. 90% of everything that comes in your box of awesome is from a small up-and-coming brand. Get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com. Just enter the code Tim Dillon at checkout. It's a really great way to get yourself some really cool stuff or give a friend some really cool stuff for the entire year. Mm. That's boxofawesome.com. Code Tim Dillon for 20% off your first box. I got a box of pancakes. How cool is that? I They asked me a few questions, and I didn't even say I wanted anything to do with food. I actually said I wanted to start hiking. But instead, they sent me a box of pancakes, pancake batter, a griddle, Vermont maple syrup, and something called Sucker Punch. What is that? It's a Bloody Mary mix. And Bloody Mary You mix. gave that to my wife. I literally said, I want to start hiking. Mm. And they sent me a griddle and pancakes. So they know you better than you know you, mm -hmm. is my point. Mm -hmm. okay. Box of awesome. Perfect. I love watches. I love them. You love them. I mean, here's the deal. We all want to watch. How about Watch Gang? Have you heard of Watch Gang? I have. You got to go to watchgang.com slash Tim. They're the number one watch club in the world. Are you a watch guy? You should become one. I am. 
They'll give a tag away every Tuesday, a Rolex every Friday, and a Seiko every Saturday. Treat yourself with up to 70% off retail. A plan for every price point. Keep every watch. All watches are guaranteed to be worth more than the price of membership. Gang partners with small European boutique brands as well as Seikos of the world. So you get everything. You get the small bespoke watches. You get the bigger brand names. Get a watch whenever you want it. Do you know how many times I'm in my car and I go, I want a watch. I got my hand on the... On the door mm -hmm. and I look at my wrist and I go I want a watch now get one get a watch whenever the hell you want it monthly quarterly or whenever Swiss and Japanese movements in all watches you need this is what I will tell people people without watches are sus especially if you're trying to look successful you need to have a watch everybody's got a watch I don't but I don't have to but I have one now. Because you do have one because Watch, watch Gang sent us watches. I know. Now I'm going to wear I'm really starting to transition into a watch person. Mm. This is true. Because of Watch Gang. Because of Watch Gang and the fact that I, I need to constantly project that I'm doing okay. And one of the ways we do that is with jewelry, which I don't. I'd look weird in chains and stuff, right? Or like around the neck? Yeah, yeah. But like I, a Jesus but piece? I, I think Maybe not. not. Actually, no. I kind of like that. look good with a Jesus piece. Yeah, maybe a basketball what if I jersey. I a watch around my neck. Watch gang, because you're in a gang now, but it's not an illegal gang. It's a gang of watches. Mm -hmm. And what's good about that is you can get many. You need different watches. There's a watch for when you meet your girlfriend's family. Mm. There's a watch for when you go on a job interview. There's a watch for when um, you are sitting in a bar alone, maybe to meet a woman. Yes. There's all these different times in your life when you need a watch. There's a watch to wear when you're saying your final goodbyes to someone who has a terminal illness. It's true. You don't want to be too flashy. <laughs> what? There's a, there's a watch for that, truly. you got to pick the right watch. You don't want to walk in with crazy bling, mm. but you also don't want to go too small. Right. You want them to notice it because it takes away some of the awkward, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. you know, they will turn around and go like, I like your watch. You know? Yeah. And there's something beautiful about that. <laughs> Go to watchgang.com now and use promo code Tim for 20% off all plans. You got to remember, all of these companies that support our show, not only do they have cool products, they love comedy. And they support comedy. And they allow comedy to happen and to be funny. So if you support that, Go to these companies and support them. It allows us to keep doing this show on YouTube. So that is Watch Gang. W-A-T-C-H-G-A-N-G dot com. Promo code T-I-M to save 20%. That's WatchGang.com. Promo code T-I-M. I'm telling you right now, it's important to have watches. These, these, uh, these Pandora papers outline this extra legal mm -hmm. way that a lot of people, and I knew this when I was a tour guide in New York City. I paid very close attention to real estate in New York, and we've talked about it ad nauseum on this show. When you have lots and lots of money, you have to do things with it. You can't just put it in banks. You can't just invest it. You can't be constantly you know, subject to regulators and taxes. You want to get away from that. And the way to do that is come up with shell corporations and put them in, in places that nobody really goes, right? Mm. Or, or very few people go. Mm. The Cayman Islands, Delaware. And then use those <laughs> shell corporations to purchase real estate, hide your ownership interest, evade taxes, do a little money laundering. That's what New York City is. It's a vertical money laundering scheme. Look at what the guy, look what the head of Louis Vuitton did with his yacht. This is a Bernard, I believe, Arnault or something. He's ahead of Louis Vuitton, and the Pandora Papers reveal he's got a real nice boat. I wonder when these things uh, get leaked. No one, no one's gonna do anything, but it's just funny because this happens, and this happened 2016, 2017, like 20. Yeah, it, it happens like I every mean, two years. The, the the next set of papers will not be papers anymore. There'll be photographs of these people with the middle finger to you. Bernard Arnault. Bernard Arnault. Arnault. Yeah. I was looking at his yacht. He's got a sick yacht. Okay. Ooh, symphony. Yeah, but That's this was nice. something, again, that got leaked in the Pandora Papers. I don't know. Because, you know, this is supposed to make you 
angry at these people, but I say you just embrace it. Mm. And you just say, hey, at least they're doing cool shit. Do you want King Abdullah to, to like, not do cool shit? Mm. If you were the king of a country mm. where you could literally kill anyone you wanted, you could do anything you wanted, you'd be expected, yeah, Bernard Arnault stealthily slips out $30 million for Beverly Hills House next door. So all of these, all of these uh, uh, people in the Pandora Papers, things are coming out. Uh, you hear that? Do they hear it now? They probably will hear the siren, yeah. All of these people <laughs> are being outed as tricksters. Yes. And then, you know, but they're cracking, they're cracking down. Do you see? They're cracking down. So this won't be going on next year. Mm. If I know, um, if I know the, the government, mm. they will get a handle on this rather quickly. And they're going to rein in the rich and make them do the right thing. What's interesting about the rich is they never smile until they're forced to smile. Like the really rich. Right. Not like you have a BMW. I mean like the incredibly wealthy hate smiling. Because I live in a building now with a lot of very wealthy people, albeit ones who've kind of destroyed their lives. A lot of divorced dads and young kids and, you know, crypto punks, but actual crypto punks, not the things they sell. Right. Um, and very few of them are smiling without, you know, some type of uh, help. Now, look at this yacht. Isn't this a beauty? It's a beautiful yacht. This is nice. That's it right there. How much? Let's see here. Something crazy I read about it. Oh, this yacht website's down. They're not doing good, I guess. They probably just put it down because of the Pandora Papers. They're just like, just chill for a week. Just take the fucking website down for a week. <laughs> I wanted to find things out that would surprise us, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I wanted to find out that, like, like, through a shell company... Like through a shell company where his ownership interest was hidden. Mm -hmm. I wanted to find out that like Sebastian Maniscalco owned like 20 private prisons. That would have been fun to find out. What are you doing? They're bad. They go to jail. Who cares? <laughs> what are you doing with these government prisons? Mm -hmm. Are you embarrassed? You go to the private prison. Let the Italians cater to private prison. <laughs> But that would have been fun. But it's just the usual suspects. Um, yeah, it's like Elton John, Shakira. Oh, yeah, so he owns a luxury mega yacht with $150 million. Mm. Yeah, he's got $93 billion, So who's who's in the Pandora Papers, he said? Elton John? Uh, you Shakira? Got, yeah, I got a, I got an article right here. Uh, these guys. Uh, look, at, look at these guys right here. These the are Pandora the Papers tax lease implicates several celebrities, including Shakira, Elton John, Julio Iglesias, Swedish House Mafia, mm -hmm. and others. Oh, Ringo Starr Ringo as well. Ringo Starr? <laughs> Let's go get these people. That's what Saudi Arabia did. They locked them all in the Rich Carlton and tortured them. Why don't we do that? We have a bunch of Rich Carltons. Yeah. What if we, for, for a purely... This is a purely comedic exercise. Okay. But imagine this. Tomorrow you wake up and Joe Biden has commandeered uh, the Rich Carlton, let's say in, uh, I don't know, wherever. New York. Okay. D.C. There's a Ritz in D.C. Okay. And he has taken over the Ritz in D.C. Uh, in the D.C. Ritz, and, 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 and tonight, while you're asleep, Shakira, Elton John, Julio Iglesias, Swedish House Mafia, Ringo Starr, mm -hmm. Bernard Arnold, everybody that is, all of these people, mm -hmm. they're kidnapped and they're driven from their homes to the Rich Carlton where they are tortured mercilessly and made to give up all their money. Mm -hmm. Now again, wrong, perhaps, but... He would win re like if he would win re-election. Cause how could you how could you say anything? Like, dude, he tortured Shakira. Yeah, yeah. Ah! She's just getting, you know, like whipped. Yeah. Ah! 
It's like Squid Games, but he's just torturing yeah. all these celebrities. Joe Biden brought Julio Iglesias <laughs> to the Ritz and caned him <laughs> until Julio admitted all the shell corpse and all the real estate he owned. Mm. Joe Biden, and he's on video, like MBS, I think, was on video or something. Uh, uh, where he was like, where he was like, hey, did you read about any of that? I you, better shut up. We're going to get killed. You showed me a video of that, but uh, I mean, there's not much about that on online. There's not a ton about yeah, it. Yeah. There's, there's not a ton about yeah. it. Um, there'll be a show on Netflix in a few years about it. That is the one thing I don't want to cover show. on here. It's like MBS and, and stuff like that. Yeah, we that. don't want to cover it. Yeah, We're yeah. not even, I'm agree. <laughs> I'm not, I'm saying nothing <laughs> negative. Listen to what I am saying. Understand what I am doing. I am not saying you did anything wrong, sir. Mm -hmm. I am saying if, and again, I would never call for this, but if Kamala Harris wanted my respect, if I found out she locked up Swedish House Mafia in the montage in Laguna Beach and tortured them until they gave up all their money, I would phone bank for her. Night of the beating. Details emerge of Riyard Ritz Carlton purge. But this is kind of interesting. It is, yeah. Three years on, some of the Saudi detainees reveal what they say took place. In early November 2017, nearly 400 of Saudi Arabia's most powerful people, among them princes, tycoons, ministers, and Shakira, were rounded up and detained in the Ritz Carlton Hotel in what became the biggest and most contentious purge in the modern kingdom's history. The arrest shook the foundations of Saudi society in an instant turning. Uh, untouchable establishment figures into targets for arrest. Statuses were discarded, assets seized, and business empires upended. A conventional pact between the state and its influential elite was shredded overnight. Now, leading figures uh, caught up in the detentions have revealed details of what they say took place. Many of whom were stripped of fortunes, portray a scene of torture and coercion, and of royal court advisors leading chaotic attempts to understand the investments behind the wealth of the king. Wouldn't it be great? So imagine our version of this. Mm -hmm. And it's just Swedish House Mafia. You're playing their music, and the torturers are going, how is this? We don't understand how you make this much money. We don't get it. Some of it is okay, but most of it I don't know. We don't get it. Because that's what happened here. The, the Saudi officials were going, how are you doing this? How are you making all this money? Like they could, they could bring Ringo Starr in and just you know, put them up on the rack and go, <laughs> you were the least talented Beatle, like by far. I don't understand. George wasn't great either, but... The disclosures come on the third anniversary of the purge and ahead of the G20 summit in Riyadh this week and advocates... Uh, of the right to women to drive among them. But see, that's what's cool. Saudi Arabia, they know how to balance it. They'll mm. do something like this, and then they go, let the women drive. Look, a woman's driving. Wait, you just tortured everybody. She's making a left. Look at her make a left. <laughs> and everyone goes, ah, she is making a left. So what they did, and we, we don't need to go into every detail here because you can get it and you can read the article. Okay, hold on. I like this. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's on fine. the first night, everyone was blindfolded, and nearly everyone was subjected to what Egyptian intelligence calls the night of the beating. Mm hmm I mean, um, it, what if Biden just came out and said this? Like he said, in response to the Pandora Papers, we kidnap a, a Swedish House Mafia and we subject it to them what we would call, and you know, Biden says it very calmly, he goes, uh, we call them the night of the beating. People were asked if they knew why they were here. No one did. They were beaten. Many of them beaten badly. They were tied to walls, stress positions, and went on for hours. And all the doing the torturing were American. Good old USA. <laughs> So the interrogators arrived on the next day. So the first day is the beatings and the torture, and the mm -hmm. next day, the interrogators. The detainees had, by then, been separated into rooms in the hotel that a year earlier had been the venue for the launch of Prince Mohammed's ambitious Vision 2030. Here's the thing with MBS. I, I feel like I like him. Yeah, yeah, he's great. Well, there's people who have said negative things, but... He's never done anything to me. I live in Beverly Hills, and I'll say this. I like him. I think he's great, mm -hmm. and I am not in any way criticizing the Saudi royal family. They have indoor lakes, and they ride jet skis on them. And I don't even care about 9-11. I don't like finance people that much anyway. Mm -hmm. There is a misconception that they turned up all-knowing with pages of data and information. They didn't. They, the interrogators knew very little, and they were winging it. 
They were hopeless on the offshore stuff. So basically, this is what you have two options. Yeah. When your Pandora Papers come mm-hmm. out. And obviously, there's a third option that involves like Congress passing laws, mm-hmm. you know? But, you know, but you, Katie Porter is ferocious, but you'd have to have a bunch of Katie Porters, you know? Katie Porter can only do so much. She's, she's trying to do her best and make a grilled cheese for everybody. <laughs> um, so, what you could do is you could lock everybody up in a hotel and beat them yeah. and torture them, or you can just kind of do what we've done, which is write real estate blogs about the houses they bought and go, stunning modern chic. It's a stunning modern chic beachfront complex. That was not going on in Riyadh. They were not talking about the stunning modern chic complexes. It was the night of the beating. <laughs> this is, this is, these are the choices. Mm. You can have night of the beating, yeah. night of the beating, or real estate blog, stunning modern chic. Mm. Many of the king's neighbors were, they were, they were in a tizzy. They didn't know who lived there. Um, Many of those that came out, blah, 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 blah. I'll tell you this, man. It's difficult to know what to do, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's hard. Because you, MBS is sitting there, and Saudi Arabia does horrible things to all kinds of people. Um, but he's sitting there, and he finds out, not to me, yet, and he's sitting there, and he finds out that people are... They're, they're, they're taking money. Mm-hmm. They're stealing. They're doing kind of what's written about in the Pandora Papers. That's right. And he goes, we're going to have to have a little bit of a talk. And we're going to have to lock everybody up in the Ritz. Mm-hmm. And the, the party's over. And my, my thing is, if Katie Porter... <laughs> God. If Katie Porter... Yeah, yeah. Kidnapped Jamie Dimon in a minivan. <laughs> like in a lunch lady outfit. Yeah, yeah. Like dressed like Chris Farley from Lunch Lady Land. If she threw Jamie Dimon in a minivan with a bunch of other CEOs and took them to like the four seasons, okay? Mm-hmm. And just directed their torture. I don't know that you'd get anything out of it but the pure aesthetic value of that to me is not nothing you know what I mean Uh, you'd be like oh they they mean business they're not kidding around mm -hmm. there was a terrible shake up in America the elites were on the run lunch lady and congresswoman Katie Porter and I know she's like a lawyer but she looks like a lunch lady she does lunch lady Katie Porter in the middle of making Sloppy Joes, kidnapped Jamie Dimon and a bunch of other CEOs and brought them to the Four Seasons Hotel where they were mercilessly tortured by interrogators. And she's just sitting there. She's like, where's the money? Mr. Dimon, I feel like we've met before. And he's like, what? He's like chained to a wall. (laughs) She's like, we've met before, haven't we? I believe I asked you a question about how people at your bank could make ends meet. Mm-hmm. I broke down all their monthly expenses. Mm-hmm. What? And the guy's just hitting them. Yeah, I remember. Well, Mr. Jamin, I have a few more questions for you. Do you have the time? I think you do. <laughs> He's just chained up in a suite at the Four Seasons Hotel, being brutalized by interrogators. Mm-hmm. And then Katie Porter is like, all right, so Mr. Diamond, let's, let's just, let's start by saying, I'm your friend. And I think we both want the best for America. Wouldn't you agree, Jamie? And he's like, please stop this. I'll give you anything you want. (laughs) Well, I'm glad you said that. Because I have a lot of questions about your bank, about about your lending practices, Mm -hmm. about the money that you've paid to get out of serious government inquiries. So I'm glad you're here. And just... Just lashing his kind of, <laughs> And again, I'm not saying it's the right thing to do. I'm just saying these seem to be the choices. These are the, We live in a world of so few choices. Mm-hmm. There's not much to do when these things come out. Mm-hmm. So you either drag all these people to a hotel and beat and torture them, or you just kind of ignore it and you go, bad boy. You're a naughty boy. You're a naughty boy. Are you being a naughty boy in Martha's Vineyard? I bet you are. There's not, you know. 
Poor, poor Ghislaine Maxwell just sitting in there. Poor Ghislaine. She's like, oh, these motherfuckers. Are oh, you reading the Pandora Papers? I've done nothing compared to these fucks. They probably treated her like a wench. When is her trial? When is Ghislaine Maxwell's trial? I believe it's November. But and then we're going to talk about Ivermectin for three hours. Oh, God. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it's November 29th. So uh, right, around, uh, right around Thanksgiving there. <clears throat> That'll be fun. Oh, a Thanksgiving trial for Ghislaine? Well, November 29th. So. Ooh, I like that, huh? A Thanksgiving party for Ghislaine mm. Maxwell. She's just in Brooklyn, just chilling. Our friend. Have you seen, have you heard of the new Alex Jones doc? Oh, no, no. That I was going to be interviewed for, but I had COVID? No, no, no. I don't know if it's public yet. Oh, okay. But it might be. Oh, it's the w woman who made um, the... TFW. Yeah, yeah, TFW... Uh, no yeah, you're not going to get anything about it. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's public yet. Yeah, yeah I'll watch that. It should be interesting. They're screening it. Uh, I think it's called Alex's War or something. They're, they're screening it. The um, she now, Things are heating up with the kids in the vaccine because now people want to give the vaccine to five-year-olds. I don't understand any of this. Um, I'm completely lost on this. Um, I understand certain kids have gotten COVID and fared very badly, but the vast, vast, vast majority of children easily beat COVID. The vast majority. They've suspended the Moderna shot in, I forget which country, for people under a certain age because it was causing myocarditis and problems like that. Um, I forget which country. Uh, uh, Japan suspends 1.6 million doses of Moderna shot? No, no. this was recently. Oh, uh, Scandinavians. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're 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 just they're like, hey man. And also in Scandinavia, people aren't as fat. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you eat, like you yeah, eat yeah. a pickled herring and you go on about your day. They don't have like, you know, you know, drive through barbecue troughs and you know they don't have like bouncy castle <laughs> pizza huts. <laughs> yeah, I mean they're just it's Scandinavia. They're a stoic people. Mm -hmm. They barely laugh. They barely, you know, they just, they enjoy like, you know, just light food, a little like kind of like, you know, interesting earthy sex, a little like, like staring at, 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 at the water in the night, during the night, mm -hmm. you know? And then I think a lot of them are on antidepressants and stuff as well, but I don't know. Um, because after a while, you know, the great thing about America is you have the highs and the lows. And over there, it's just kind of a state, like it's Prozac. The country's kind of on Prozac. Yeah, yeah. But they made a good point. They're like, kids get over this stuff. Why are we giving it to young people? And they have an increased risk of heart inflammation, it says, for the Moderna. Yeah, it's the myocarditis. So th this, this, this is kind of this debate is heating up about, go to Drudge. Drudge had it. Uh, there was a, uh, and I think Gavin Newsom did a vax mandate. Oh, Tesla's moving to Austin, by the way. Mm -hmm. yeah, Elon yeah. Musk moving Tesla to Austin, Texas, my favorite city. Finland joined Sweden and Denmark in limiting Moderna COVID-19 vaccine um, for people that were, for men. Um, okay, hold on. They said that Finland would instead give Pfizer's vaccine to men born in 1991 and later. So under 30. Yeah. I don't know if these countries are doing a ton of mandates, though. I don't know that they are. I think, you know... I think in those countries, people just want to get vaccinated. Some so they of them don't have to. Some of them aren't doing the mandate. Mm -hmm. Some of them aren't. Um, and now we have like, I told you, I walked in somewhere with my godson in like an ice cream parlor, and the woman's like, "How old is he?" I'm like, "He's like one." She's like, "Oh, at two, they got to wear a mask." It's like, bitch, what are you talking about? Where was this? This was here. Yeah, in an ice cream parlor. Good lord. But this is what I mean about. People are go a little going nutty now. They're looking at a baby like, what's his deal? That's crazy. <laughs> They're looking at a baby like, yeah, what's his deal? He's a little vector of disease, isn't he? <laughs> I'm like, man, people just turn into Nazis overnight. Mm. Overnight they turn into Nazis. It's not even a process. Mm. Where's your card? Ah! It's a lot. But, you know, there's also a lot of people in this country that think that's a phenomenal idea. Mm. So, you know, what are you going to do? Tesla moving its headquarters uh, from California to Austin, Texas, the greatest city in America. Elon Musk is moving um, Tesla, which is uh, makes a silly car. It's silly. 
Um, and it is. It's kind of for children, right? When I see Teslas, I go, that's for a child. It's a toy. It's, it's a not for an adult. When you right? get in it, it's like fun. You're excited to yeah, get it's in a car. It's for a child. Mm. So he's moved his children's toy car company <laughs> to Austin, Texas. And then he, the cool stuff he does is with those SpaceX satellites. Remember we were in the backyard with John Shahidi and we mm. thought we were being invaded by aliens? Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, we're all just sitting in the backyard smoking sticks. And then the Tesla Starlink satellites yeah, yeah. went over um, our heads and we're all staring at them. I'm like, dude, are we being, we thought we were being invaded. Mm. Me and Shahidi thought we were being invaded by aliens. Because the UFO stuff was he ramping up. Yeah. all the news. and yeah. John was like, when they land, what brands will they align with? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I love John. We miss him. Hopefully we see more of them now that we're going to be back in L.A. But I'm still living in Texas and love Texas. I'm a full-time resident, and I have an apartment here occasionally when I need to be here for work. Truly, mm -hmm. I'll be in Texas That's for the majority of my life, forever, because I love it. On a red dirt road. <laughs> I'll be on a red dirt road. Um, <laughs> to be clear, but we should do that in Austin, by the way. Let's kidnap everybody in Austin and bring them to a hotel mm. and make them clean it. To be clear, we will be continuing to expand our activities in California, Musk said. Our intention is to increase output from Fremont and the Giga Nevada by 50%. If you go to our Fremont facility, it's jammed. But, he added, it's tough for people to afford houses. People have come in from far away. There's a limit to how big you can scale in the Bay Area. So he's going to uh, Austin. Takes Tesla less time to build a factory than to reach high-volume production, Musk said. For example, Tesla's Shanghai plant was built in 11 months, but took a year to reach high-volume production. He expects Tesla's new plant near Austin will follow Shanghai's example. It's going to be interesting. Texas and California, you know, Tom Segura and Christina talked about this. They're having a war. Texas and California are in a war. Mm -hmm. I mean, Austin's not going to be cheap either. I know the Bay Area is Austin's expensive. Austin's not going to be cheap. Here's the thing with Texas and California. New York will always be the king. It's just a reality. New York will always be the king. It is what it is. It's always going to be the king. Texas and California can vote, can fight each other for the secondary slot. All of the meaningful, like New York has all of our... Institute, cultural institutions, you know, you know, the East Coast has a lot of the academic institutions, a lot of intelligent people. Um, there's a reason Jeffrey Epstein didn't live in Austin. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's a reason. But New York's always <laughs> going to be the king. Uh, California and Texas can fight for number two. And uh, and then Florida. Are we doing Steve's ad today? Oh, uh, yeah, you can go right into so it. So we're going into talk about Florida. Steve will do it from Oviedo, Florida. Mm. He's a member of the Nelk Boys. Mm. The Nelk Boys are a group of uh, internet pranksters who don't make any money on YouTube. They've been demonetized because they're wild. They do crazy stuff. They pretend to drink and do coke in front of the cops. And um, they go to colleges all over America and get the kids... Uh, and I like this. They say with the kids, stop the focusing on the politics and the gender. Mm. Let's get fucked up and jump off a roof. Right. That's what college used to be about. Sexual assault, how about somersault? Where we just, <laughs> we jump off the house. But that's what they, they do. They go to colleges and they get people nice and revved up. Mm. They get people drunk and full send. And they just, it's all about hedonism and it's fun. It's good for the kids. A little different, you know? Um so we're very proud to have Steve. And I like Steve because he's kind of the breakout star of the uh, the Nelk faction. There's a few other ones. The Kyle, who I like, but he's he's serious. You know, he's, he's got a... The businessman. He's the business guy. He's, he's serious. He's, he seems like he'll throw a woman down the stairs. And then there's Salim, the other guy who I like, but could turn on the country at any minute. So you got to watch him. <laughs> but Kyle is just a simple Florida guy who mm -hmm. loves uh, uh, booze and Trump and... Uh, so this, this episode is brought to you by Steve Will Do It. And by the way, he is hilarious. Like, his videos are actually very funny. Yeah. He did a video with Dobrik where, like, he gives to David Dobrik another Tesla because they had some beef that wasn't real and they kind of patched it up. Mm. And, like, David Dobrik's like, how much is his watch? And then Steve Will Do It says, like, very nonchalantly. He's like, it's $500,000. It's very nonchalantly. He's like, it's $500,000. So it's, this episode is brought to you by Steve Will Do It, the world's number one YouTube channel. If you are not already a, 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 aware, Steve is the prolific frontman of the Canadian group, the Nelk Boys. 
You've pre, pre, probably seen his videos where he gave David Dobrik a Tesla. Did he write this himself? Did he write this like drunk in a car? He might have, yeah. He probably wrote this like drunk in a car, just coked out at like a signal. Like everybody's like, everybody's like beeping, just make, go, go. He's like, shut up. Um, he bought a yacht with $10 million in Bitcoin, met Donald Trump aboard Air Force One, and donated hundreds of thousands of dollars to the less fortunate, along with his best friend and philanthropist, Takashi69. I mean, I can't make this ad funnier, but we do love Steve, and I, I'm sure he has done things for the less fortunate with Takashi 69 Check out his happy dad, Seltzer. They have a new Seltzer. Mm. It's in stores in Florida, Nevada, California, and Massachusetts, Coll places where people party. Mm. Steve is also is one of the biggest emerging fashion brands with Full Send. This is true. They send me shit all the time. Go to FullSend.com to sign up for exclusive merch drops. Everything is currently sold out, and you don't want to miss out. Because these people, by the way, when they release merch, it's not like me where I got to beg my fans to buy it. I got to beg them like a guy who cheated on his wife to get back in the door of their house so he can give his daughter a birthday present. I got to beg them. And then the merch companies we use are deadbeats. And don't hold that against me. Still buy. But they're deadbeats and morons. Michael Gruen with his fucking, you know, his advice. Never take merch advice from a guy that wears a, that wears a uh, undershirt everywhere. Michael, they make clothes for big people. I'll take you to DXL. Enough with the undershirt. Go to fullsend.com. <laughs> To sign up for exclusive uh, merch drop. Do you know the Nelk video? They have a new Nelk video coming out with Brian Laundry, where they said it, it's just about getting fucked up, and it's it's called leaving the past in the past. And it's Brian Laundry and Nelk. <laughs> yeah, no, this is good. It's Brian Laundry and Nelk, and they just go and get fucked up. Mm. I don't know who this Brian Laundry is, but he's fun. So go to fullsend.com because when they release this merch, it sells out immediately because all these kids, like all my little cousins mm -hmm. and people like that, mm -hmm. uh, go and buy it. And, and, and adults buy it too. Lastly, go right now to Steve Will Do It YouTube channel right now and see what all the hubbub is about for yourself. He drops new videos every single Thursday. They actually are entertaining. So go there, hit like, and subscribe. Steve Will Do It is literally the craziest channel on YouTube and in comparison makes David Dobrik seem like a docile peasant. That is S-T-E-V-E-W-I-L-L-D-O-I-T. -E -L -L Steve will do it on YouTube. And, and he's a fr friend of this show. He's a fan of the show. He helps us all the time get our name out there. And we're, we're really excited that he's come on now as a sponsor of the, of the uh, Tim Dillon show. Mm -hmm. And we're very proud of him uh, going. Because Brian Laundrie's had a rough month. And I think it's to Nelk to feature him in a video is like cool. Yeah, yeah. And they'll get flack for it. They're gonna get flack for it because of the PC culture. People are gonna get angry because of PC culture yeah, yeah. when they put Brian Laundry on a jet ski <laughs> and he's, you know, <laughs> just funneling Bacardi rum in in, yeah. in a Cancun or whatever, wherever these people go. So Steve will do it dot com. What else do we got in terms of advertisements? I bet we've got so much fun stuff. Then I want to go over to the store and see Jessica Kearson, the very funny Jessica Kearson who just did Joe Rogan's show. Blue Chew, how much, I mean, how many times do I have to tell you Blue Chew? It is the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. It's a chewable. It's to help your peen peen get hard. You know you need it. It gives you the confidence you may lack in the bedroom. It's so easy. Just a consultation. Uh, with a doctor online or some medical professional. Blue Chew, you go online, you get a referral uh, from an official medical person, and they find out what's right for you in the dosage, and you can take it on a full or empty stomach. You do whatever you want to do. You do whatever you want to do with the chew. Blue to the chew. And I'm just telling you right now, it's, it's a great thing. So if you could uh, benefit from extra confidence in the bedroom, Blue Chew can help. Promo code TD. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code TD at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com. Promo code TD to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com 
for more details and important safety information. We thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Gabby Insurance is so important. It's crazy how fast the prices of just about everything right now are rising. Gas, groceries, clothes, you name it. And all the experts are saying it's going to get worse before it gets better. I've been looking at all the ways I can personally cut out costs. This is true. Ways to save where I can. I started with auto insurance. I started with Gabby. Shopping for auto insurance sucks. I get it. So does Gabby. That's why all they do works for you. Things that would take days or weeks, Gabby does in minutes. Gabby uses your current policy to compare your coverage with 40 of the top insurance providers nationwide and travelers. They're the one true comparison platform with fast, verifiable quotes, not ballpark guesses. And because Gabby uses your current coverage, they only show policies that are the same or better than your current coverage. Many of them are a lower price. And Gabby is free to use, and they never sell your info so no annoying spam or robocalls. Gabby helped me find the right policy for my Range Rover. It was great. I logged in with my current insurance provider. I got so many quotes. I don't even know how many. A lot. And I, the dollar amount that Gabby saved me. People who switch with Gabby save, on average, $80 a month versus their current policy. It's $80. Okay? It's not just me who loves Gabby. Gabby's been featured in TechCrunch, Forbes, USA Today. Start saving on your auto insurance today. Go to Gabby.com slash Tim Dillon to start saving today. It's totally free. That's G-A-B-I dot com slash Tim Dillon. Gabby.com slash Tim Dillon. Let's end this gangbuster of an episode with a trailer because you know me and Disney Plus. I have nothing but great things to say. There is a documentary about Fauci. Um, when the Obamas got a Netflix deal... And now that um, Harry and Meghan have one, mm. um, it is becoming quite clear that politicians are going to no longer rely on the hacks in Hollywood and the media to portray them in a uh, flattering light. They are going to directly get involved with how their legacies are sculpted. It's a pretty brilliant move. Mm. Uh, these people are directly going to get involved and influence public opinion. So there is now a documentary about Fauci. Now, whatever you think of Fauci, what, running the gamut from AIDS Hitler <laughs> to second coming of, of <laughs> vaccine Christ, whatever you think about fax, uh, Fauci, whatever you think about Fauci, mm. this is wildly unnecessary. <laughs> we are still in the middle of a pandemic. The resources devoted to making this film should not have been. Let's watch the trailer. Okay. When I think about my dad growing up, I certainly think about that seriousness. But very few people get to see. <laughs> He's funny, weird, and really playful. God help us. In 1981, HIV AIDS was evolving rapidly and frighteningly. There was anger at the government's response. When you got sick, you were gone fast. It's affecting you now. Yeah. Why? I think he was good on this. I think, you know, from what I've heard about him on the AIDS front, I believe he was in a don't, you know, people are going to be like, he created it. <laughs> You're a liar. And I uh, just... <laughs> I, but what I've heard from people that work in epidemiology is that he was good on that. He's been a little bit of a klutz here. Mm. If, if, if we want to be really nice about it, you'd call him a klutz. Mm. Um, you, if you wanted to be a meanie, you would call him a liar. And um, someone who has perhaps twisted the truth to protect people. Um, but a klutz would, would certainly be... Not wrong to call him, but let's continue this. Stress syndrome. He also when loves COVID the spotlight. He too became much. this target. My dad said, we're going to get through this whole thing. Yeah, and he's TikTok. held that. You don't he do it, it because MTV, you want to make uh, money. You don't do it for the glory. You do it because you care. When you're involved in a race to stop a horrible disease, you always feel you're not doing things quickly enough. Okay, well, it was morbid. It kind of just shows that he kind of failed, like, massively. Well, what was he supposed to do, you know? Completely, like, stop AIDS? Of course. He's not supposed to do that. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, 
I guess if you work in that business, like you're always gonna kind of fail, right? You know, mm. you know. He's an interesting guy. He's been a government. He's been the the pandemic guy forever. It's, that's a weird dude. You know. The guy was like, you know what gets me up in the morning? What disease? You go, okay. Stopping it or what? It's like the people that talk about poverty all the time. Like, do you really want it to end? Mm. Then what would you do? I work at the Center for Global Poverty. Okay. And what would you like? Well, we'd like more global poverty. Why? Well, that's kind of what we do. Okay. It's kind of with disease a little bit. Yeah, yeah. They're like, we don't want to get rid of all the diseases. He's like, we like to, you know, we like a little bit of disease. A little bit of... <coughs> Makes everything work. <laughs> See, that'd be funny. Why doesn't Disney do that? Like, do an animated thing where Fauci's, like, having a little fun with gain-of-function research. You know, he's like, a little bit of... <coughs> makes everything work. We need... And just needles, like, in the background. Yeah, yeah. Why can't we have a little fun? Mm. Where are the talented people behind uh, these pictures? Mm. We can do something with a little music. You know, Laura, who opened for me in Boston works at Harvard and loves Fauci. So I know that there's people that love him. Mm. And I, my problem with him is that he's an Italian, an Italian. And I believe that we should be represented by an Asian or a Jew in the medical field or a Pakistani or someone from India. I don't trust a guy that looks like me talking about health. And I certainly don't trust uh, Mr. Meatball. But go check that out for yourself. Uh, what are they called? Disney Plus. What is it called? It's Disney Plus. It's just called Fauci. They were shooting a doc this this whole time. I didn't know that. They're like the when we see Jake Paul out and about, and there's cameras following him. Fauci had the same thing. But Fauci is he's epidemiology's Jake Paul. That's what he is. Fauci is epidemiology's Jake Paul. You can hate him, you can love him, yeah, yeah. but he ain't going nowhere. That's what it is. Mm. You can hate him. You could love him, but that man is determined to have his face splashed. You, there's a version of Fauci that goes, no, I don't want to do this. Right. There's a version of him that goes, there's no need. I'm busy. Right. There's a version of him that goes, I don't think it's appropriate. Ugh. In the middle of a pandemic that was supposedly serious enough where we had to decimate our entire economy, mm -hmm. I think it would be odd to do like a, a puff piece on me. Why don't we wait a few years? But I guess not. You just dove right in. He goes, yeah, what time are you going to be there? Nine? Should I be in makeup? I'll be in makeup already. <laughs> don't worry about it. He's on the phone. He's like, cancel the lab. I got a thing. <laughs> no, I got all day. It's just the crew showing up. They're like, we'll be quick. He's like, no, no, no. We, I blocked off a week for this. They go, really? <laughs> He goes, yeah. He goes, I'm doing two dope queens later, but right now I have all the time to talk to you. I'm doing my favorite murder later. I'm going to tell Karen Kilgariff about the vaccine. Enough with him. TimDillonComedy.com for all live dates. We apologize about Milwaukee. We, th we moved the Thursday show to Sunday. Flights got fucked. We got fucked. We're using a temporary studio. We got fucked out of uh, TimDillonComedy.com. has got all the dates for the tour. We're starting in late October. We're going everywhere. Mm -hmm. Spokane, Seattle, Portland, Indianapolis, Morgantown, West Virginia, Pittsburgh, Washington, New York, Atlantic City, Rochester, Iowa City, Madison, Wisconsin, Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, Los Angeles, California, Bakersfield, California, San Diego, Reading, Pennsylvania, Atlanta, Georgia. We've added second shows in Atlanta and Sacramento. Atlantic City. Atlantic City. St. Louis, Sacramento, um, San Francisco, Garden City, Indiana, mm -hmm. Toronto, Ontario. Oh, and my favorite, Iowa City. Is that still happening? Yeah, my favorite, Iowa City. We'll just go there and, and make the money. So that is on the 18th, everybody. Go get tickets to the Englert Theater in Iowa City where there was a big kerfuffle. There was a big uproar at me doing jokes, I guess, at the expense of, I don't know, nurses. Um, because we all know that the one thing heroes can't handle is a guy on a stage making a, a, a little joke. Think about all the heroes from movies being like, he made a joke about me. And I'm not even blaming the nurse. This is, again, this is uh, supposedly because I questioned the uh, response to the pandemic. I questioned the response to the pandemic, 
How Orwellian. Uh, there was a, 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 a people were emailing <laughs> the Englert Theater. I don't even know what it is. I don't know what they do at the Englert Theater. Mm. I'm sure they have some big comedians and bands go, mm. but I don't know what goes on at the Englert Theater. But apparently, they have a there's a real thriving arts community in Iowa City that was unhappy with uh, some of the remarks I've made. And by thriving arts community, I mean two people with blue hair and cats who sent one email. That Seth Simons wrote. <laughs> TimDillonComedy.com. Full send, baby. Goodbye. <laughs>